Hello data pros, welcome back to another exciting episode of our Snowflake learning series. In our previous video, we provided an overview of Snowflake and explored its unique architecture. Today, we'll advance further by signing up for a free trial Snowflake account. We'll then explore various methods to connect to your Snowflake account. Once we've covered that, we'll proceed with a hands-on exercise involving creating database objects, loading sample data, and running queries on top of it. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Setting up a free trial Snowflake account is a relatively simple process. Please visit signup.snowflake.com. Fill in your details. If you don't have a company email or name, you can use your personal email and name instead. Once you've filled in all the details, click on Continue. We'll explore the differences between these editions later, but for now, I recommend selecting the Enterprise Edition which allows you to practice many advanced features. Choose the cloud provider that you're familiar with, or where you already have your existing data and infrastructure. You can leave the default cloud region, which is populated based on your current location. Please accept the terms and select Get Started. Feel free to skip any optional survey questions. You're now signed up, but there's one more step. You need to activate your account using the email sent to your registered email address. If you cannot find the email, please check your spam and other folders. Before activating, make sure to note down your Snowflake account URL. You can even bookmark this URL for convenient subsequent logins to your Snowflake account. Please select the Activate button. You can now set up a user ID and password of your choice, but please read the password requirements and set it accordingly. That's it. You're now in Snowflake's web user interface, popularly known as SnowSite. Next, we'll explore various options available for connecting and working with Snowflake. Firstly, let's discuss SnowSite. SnowSite is one of the primary methods for interacting with Snowflake. Let's quickly explore how to utilize it. Upon entering SnowSite, you'll notice a user-friendly navigation bar on the left-hand side. By selecting any option, you'll see the corresponding features displayed in the main panel. For instance, under Projects, you can choose Worksheets to view and create worksheets. Snowflake provides sample worksheets, but you can also create your own by selecting the plus icon. Ensure to set the appropriate role and virtual warehouse. You're now all set to execute SQL statements. Moving on, let's discuss data. In this section, you can explore and manage various database objects such as tables and views. Next, let's explore data products. Here, you can collaborate with users from other Snowflake accounts by securely sharing your data and application packages. Additionally, you have the option to publish or sell your data products on the Snowflake marketplace. Similarly, as a consumer, you can access datasets and application packages shared with your account by other Snowflake users. Furthermore, you gain access to the extensive collection of data available on the Snowflake marketplace, which includes both free and paid data products. In the monitoring section, you can explore query details, analyze the performance of executed queries, check status of data loads, and debug or rerun queries that are failed if necessary. Lastly, the admin page enables you to create and manage virtual warehouses, understand Snowflake resource usage to effectively manage costs, administer users and roles, set up network policies, and much more. Now that we have a good understanding of SnowSite, let's shift our focus to SnowSQL. While SnowSite serves as a web interface, SnowSQL acts as the command line interface for working with Snowflake. To get started, please download and install SnowSQL from the official Snowflake website. I've included this download link in the video description. If you're using Windows, you can follow along with me. For others, I've also provided a link in description with steps for Mac and Linux. Here's a summary of the steps to quickly connect to your Snowflake account, we'll be doing the same shortly. Click Finish. Next, please open the command prompt and enter snowsql-a, account name, followed by hyphen u, username. 
You can find your account name in your activation email, and the username and password were set up by you as part of account creation process just before. You'll be prompted to enter your password. We're now successfully connected to our Snowflake account. Initially, no database or schema is selected, but you can set this easily. Snowflake conveniently auto-populates values for you. Let's execute a simple select query on one of the sample tables that came along with your Snowflake account. Everything works as expected. You can even pre-configure connection details in a config file located in the user's home directory. Once this is set up, you won't need to enter username, password, and database details every time you log in. What you've seen so far is the SnowSQL interactive mode. In addition, SnowSQL also supports a batch mode. You can easily utilize SnowSQL within your script files. Furthermore, these script files can be scheduled to run as per your requirements. Besides these two methods, there are several other ways to interact with Snowflake. The Snowflake extension for Visual Studio Code offers features similar to SnowSQL, but within the familiar environment of Visual Studio Code. You can perform operations on Snowflake programmatically using Snowflake APIs and drivers. For instance, the Snowflake REST API provides standard REST endpoints for interacting with Snowflake. Additionally, the Snowflake Python API offers various methods for working with Snowflake. Furthermore, Snowflake provides database drivers or connectors for popular languages such as .NET, Node.js, PHP, Go, and Python. It also offers generic JDBC and ODBC drivers that can be utilized with supported languages like Java and C++. Lastly, Snowflake seamlessly integrates with a variety of third-party tools and platforms, including well-known business intelligence and data integration solutions. For example, products such as Tableau, Power BI, Informatica, Talent, and Data IQ come with pre-built connectors designed for easy integration with Snowflake. After understanding various connectivity options, it's time for our hands-on practice. In this section, we'll create database objects, load some sample data, and run queries on top of it. The exercise Load Sample Data with SQL from S3 Bucket that comes along with the Snowflake account is an excellent starting point. Let's proceed step by step. Firstly, we'll set the role and warehouse, even though these are already defaults, there's no harm in executing them. This creates a new database called Tasty Byte Sample Data. Next, we'll create a new schema named RawPOS within the database that we just created. Post that, a new table with the name menu is created within the schema. Since we've just created the table and haven't loaded any data yet, running a select statement won't return any rows. Here, we're creating a stage referencing a publicly available S3 bucket. We'll cover more concepts later, but for now, just consider stage as a temporary storage area for holding raw data files. Next, let's list the contents inside the stage, specifically within the raw POS slash menu folder. It appears that there is a compressed CSV file. With this copy into statement, we'll proceed to load the CSV file from the stage into the table we've already created. Now, let's check if we've successfully loaded the data. Excellent, everything works as expected. Here are some additional business queries you may encounter in a typical project. We'll cover semi-structured data in our later lessons. In the meantime, here's a sample query demonstrating how to retrieve values from a JSON variant column. Congratulations! We've successfully completed our first exercise. That's all for today.
Please stay tuned for our next video where we'll explore more advanced snowflake features. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. We also welcome your questions or thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for watching.